Oi gente, eu sou a Briganico e essa é a entrevista que a gente fez com Simon Pegg de jogador número 1. Ele é uma das maiores lendas que tem de cinema geek e cinema nerd, então é, assim, é muito, foi muito legal conversar com ele. E a gente fez essa entrevista quando ele teve passagem pelo Brasil no finalzinho de 2017 para promover o filme Jogador Número 1. Confere aí. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere. Except the Oasis. You're almost like an icon when it comes to pop culture and nerd stuff. You've been all around, yeah. all the series we love, all the, the, the films we love, you've been in Doctor Who and stuff like that. So, um, what are, are your references? What are, what are your influences to working with this kind of stuff? Like yeah, I guess my love of this, of, of genre cinema, probably uh, generates from when I was seven or eight and I first saw Star Wars. and and the ensuing kind of craze for science fiction that happened because of that. It was all around me when I was a little kid. Also, you know, Steven Spielberg, whose films I really, really loved, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Jaws later when I was old enough to see it. Um, these films shaped my love of cinema. So to get to work with, particularly with Steven, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dream come true, you know. I'm, I'm, I feel very lucky. How is it like working with him? Uh, it's brilliant. I love working with him. You know, somebody just pointed out to me actually that I've worked with him three times now because we did Tim Tim, but he also does a little guest appearance in Paul. Uh, mm -hmm. He did he had his voice in Paul, so he came in and recorded this, and we actually directed Steven Spielberg, which is oh, reversing roles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then obviously on this, um, you know, he's a, he's a, a, a genuine master and. and um, It's a, it's a pleasure to get to watch him work, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really educational as well as just very enjoyable and, and fulfilling as an actor and a, and a, a filmmaker. In Ready Player One we see a lot of references of, to other pop, uh, pop culture things. Which one of them is your favorite? If you can tell us. I don't know if I can tell you because there are things in the film that aren't in the book because One of the difficulties of making the book into a film is that there are so many references in it that it would cost, you know, a lot of money to try and clear everything. You have to legally, you know, uh, clear everything you use. Um, so in the in the film adaptation, what Zach Penn did was he very cleverly adapted some of the references. And um, Warner Brothers, who made the film, they obviously had things that were uh, we could use to reference, which was obviously easy to get hold of. Um, so there are a couple of things in there that aren't in the book, which are extraordinary, and I, but I don't want to spoil it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we have to wait to I know, see it. I know, it's a pain, I'm sorry. Hello, if you're watching this, I'm dead. I created a hidden object, an Easter egg. The first person to find the egg will inherit half a trillion dollars and total control of the oasis itself. The movie is all about chasing an Easter egg. Yeah. D does the movie has an Easter egg of its own? I think the movie is so full of Easter eggs that you're going to be feeling like you've had too much chocolate. It's, um, you know, there, there are lots of things to spot. I think there's a great story at the heart. So if you went to that film not knowing any of the references in it, you'd still enjoy it because there is a tale to tell about, you know, someone trying to reach a treasure. It's a classic story. It's peppered with moments. Even in the trailer, you see the DeLorean and you see Freddy Krueger and the Iron Giant. There are lovely things to, to spot and enjoy. And I think that'll be a, another fun part of watching the movie. So yeah, there are lots and lots of Easter eggs in the film. <laughs> and um, if you could design a word like that, but uh, made by you and with your references and your, you know, brand on it, yeah. how would it be? I think it would just be like the world that we live in now, but none of the bad people. <laughs> it would just be geeks. <laughs> just the good people. Just the good people. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a thing that it would need to have You know, the, the danger is with these, these worlds is that you, your humanity gets lost, you know, and, and, and you'd have to hang on to that. That's the only danger of, of, of existing in a world that, that is virtual, is, is losing yourself. Um, but I don't know, there's, there's arguments. So there's a, the wonderful thing in the movie is that the players of the game, their projections of themselves are quite different mm -hmm. to look at. 
but ultimately the heart of those characters they're all they are them you know it's the they're, they're, they're the same deep down and I think that there's a a lesson there about who we project ourselves as being and who we really are and how it's very hard to not be yourself really um, yeah that would be the thing I would be worried about losing is humanity there seems to be a lot of uh, talk about this now because technology is really stepping up and we are like c catching on it and things like that themes like that uh, virtual realities and stuff like that we uh, we kind of already are dipping our toes in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you see this kind of world from uh, Ready Player One maybe becoming a thing? A hundred percent. I mean, I, you know, there's already, you know, games that you can go into and, and be in with other people and, you know, whether it's Call of Duty or Minecraft or whatever, there, there are worlds you can go into and walk around and look at other people that are real people, but, you know, avatars are real people. It's not going to be long before we're doing that with VR. The kind of we already are in a way. Um, what also has to develop is your sensory interface with that world. So what you feel and touch and how you move. As soon as that starts to become, you know, more advanced, then people will be able to go and just exist in these places. You know, and it might become addictive. And it, it feels to me like Ready Player One is entirely plausible. It's not. It's not a bizarre fantasy. It's. In the same way that Minority Report, you know, in places felt very much like a possible future, so does this, I think. And how does this uh, humanity existentialism uh, discussion goes on with this? Uh, I think in the movie, yeah, it, it, one of the reasons that my character, Ogden Morrow, and, and uh, Mark Rylance's character have a disagreement is because Ogden Morrow is, is keen that people take some time off every now and again and, and, and stay in touch with the real world because you could become lost in, in fantasy and it's dangerous. Nostalgia is a dangerous thing, you know, to get... It, it, nostalgia even sounds like an illness, you know, it's like neuralgia or... Yes. If you get <laughs> right. too much of it, is, right. isn't, isn't a good thing, you know. And I think that's essentially the, the message is that it's okay to look back and it's okay to enjoy the past but don't live in it because you can't, can't move forward otherwise. We're, we're seeing a recent surge as well in 80s culture. How do you feel about this? I think it's entirely right in a way, just because the 80s was sneered at in the 90s, mm -hmm. you know, for being too colorful and, and full of bad taste. And, but it was actually an incredibly vibrant, experimental time. A lot of really cool things happened culturally, politically, socially, a lot of, 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 of things happened in the 80s, you know. And I think by comparison, the 90s was a fairly bland decade, you know, it was a bit like, Meh. you know, the 80s was just amazing when you look back at it. And I think it's good that it's getting a second look. It's good that people are looking back and going, oh, hang on, no. You know, there were a lot of uh, good ideas and interesting music and cultural shifts, you know, that took place in the 80s. And it's, uh, it's not the maligned kind of 10 years that it, it, it sometimes seems to be. Did you take any souvenirs from the set? Did I take any souvenirs? No, I didn't. I should have done, shouldn't you I? You should, you should have. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, they, 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 you have to give everything back at the end of the day. Props are very, they know you nick things. Mm. They don't trust actors. <laughs> <laughs> like many of you, I only came here to escape. But I found something much bigger than just myself. Are you willing to fight? Help us save the Oasis.